Hello everybody, this is RFX Cam uh, 2014. It's still in alpha, uh, pretty low version number right now, and uh, pretty much the first public release was in June. I'm going to take you through some basic operations, how to create some geometry, and how to create some toolpaths and export it. So starting up on the left, you got your project menu, create new ones, open or imports. Uh, right now it supports SVG format as well as proprietary RFX. Uh, it's hoped that we can do DFX uh, DXF eventually. Um, please note also that text is not really supported yet uh, as I haven't quite figured that out with the SVG format and how to get into this program. You got your typical edit menu uh, and your view menu. So in view you can turn the grid on and off. Uh, you can tell it whether or not you want to snap to it and you can set the size of the grid uh, that you would want. Uh, basically, when you draw a geometry, it'll snap whatever point you have to the closest grid coordinate. Uh, you have some basic camera functionality, so you can switch over to an isometric view, top, front, back. Uh, you can also hold the shift key and the arrow keys to move around. We still need to work on the mouse uh, interface for actually uh, manipulating the view. And you have your basic windows. Uh, you see your project explorer and log. Those are these two windows. Your Project Explorer is a tree view. It shows you a list of all the geometry that's active in your project, what layer it's on, what color it displays, and pretty much all your information. So you'll be spending a lot of time with that. You got your plugins. Uh, currently, I don't have any plugins loaded. Uh, however, the plugins are written in Python. Um, so you can actually easily create your own plugins, which I think will be a nice feature. Uh, your basic settings. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start here with uh, a project. We don't need a very big uh, material right now. So I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to set my width to, uh, let's say, 3. And I'm going to make my height, uh, let's go with 4. I'm going to do uh, 3 quarters of an inch thick. There we go. Go ahead and zoom in on there. All right, so that's uh, kind of our basic setup. So now we're going to go over to our tools, which are on the left. You've got your select tool, uh, which has select groups or select nodes or segments. Uh, then you have your manipulation, so moving, scaling, mirror, aligning, patterns. You have your draw tools, and then you have your operations, uh, such as booleans, offsets, reversals, uh, merging points. So let's go ahead and just create a little hold down clamp. So what I'm going to do, uh, let's just start by selecting our rectangle, drawing a quick little rectangle there. Uh, since we're going to be doing some machining, uh, I'm going to add two more rectangles. And that'll be uh, clear as to why I'm doing that here in a second. Uh, and then we need a little gap down the middle, let's say. So I'll go ahead and add a line there. Okay, you can press escape to cancel out of a line so it doesn't add another point to it. Uh, or you can just select another tool. Uh, we won't get into any of the uh, other features more complicated stuff uh, just yet. Uh, but for now, we can go and look at our Explorer. You can see under Geometry, hey, we have everything. We have our rectangles that we did, our paths. Uh, say you wanted to manipulate that rectangle, make it a little bigger or smaller, double click it, brings up uh, your properties. You can rename it, you can give the position, the size, the rotation, and you got your nice little origin. Uh, you can see right now, if I click the, the lower left, uh, this corner is at 1, uh, comma, 0.5 for your coordinates, which that makes sense based off of the grid. And you can move that around if you want to and just press apply. So now uh, we're going to do one thing. I don't like how this is all uh, layered up, so I'm going to actually add a layer. And there's our new layer. I'm going to call it all paths. Cool. Okay. Say so I want to take all this stuff and put that in there. I'm going to go ahead and just... Cut it, select all paths, paste it. Now they're all in the all paths. You don't really need to do that, but it's a nice little, uh, nice little feature. Uh, you can also change the color of particular parts. So let's do this one. Oh, sorry. I'm just going to right click it. I'm going to say color. Let's just change it to red for fun. All right, and you can see it changed all of them to red. And you can see now it's actually displayed uh, red. Uh, that's just basically so that you can group things visually for yourself as well if you'd like to. So I'm going to go back to my select tool uh, and now we're going to actually do some tool paths. 
So I'm going to go ahead and select these first two, and I'm going to go over to my uh, tool paths. I'm going to select a pocket. How deep do I want it? Now, we set it up that it was 3 quarters of an inch deep. Uh, this cut depth starts from zero, uh, meaning where is the zero on the machine? Under those settings tabs, you saw, or you will see, that you can set it to either be the plane of your machine or the top of the material. Right now, I have it set to the top of the material, so we're going to cut down a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to use a flat end mill. Uh, let's rename that. And here you can just manipulate everything that you want to do. And it does save. You can add new tools. You can copy them uh, with your tools over here. Uh, basically, we've got a quarter inch end mill. Uh, it's got a 0.4 step over. I'm going to be doing 0.25 depths, depths per cut, which is kind of aggressive on some stuff, but in the wood that I'm working with, that's perfectly fine. Set your feed rates, your plunge rates, uh, your RPM, which is too low, uh, what your units are, and then your diameters. It's of note right now that things like ball nose, tapered, vivid, they're not really supported yet. Uh, I've done the basic code to allow them, uh, but it's not going to make any difference in the output uh, right now. That will come eventually. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that. And then I want to do climb and machine allowance. OK, apply. Now it generated those tool paths, those pockets. And you can see them in blue here. You can also see them listed here. And you can do the same thing where you can rename them if you'd like to, but we're not going to do that right now. Let's uh, move on. Let's cut our little center. Just select that, and I'm going to do a contour this time. Uh, I want to cut all the way through. I'm going to select the same tool, and I want to do an on. Okay, so apply. There you go. We got our contour. And then the last one that we have to do is contour the outside edge. So I'm going to go 0.75 again, fourth end mill, and I'm actually going to go right. Uh, still need to work on this a little bit as to what the conventions are uh, and the cutting direction climb versus uh, conventional currently isn't implemented. It's to be done. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that, and you can see it created it. Now select each one. Awesome. Now note that I cannot click on a toolpath. It's just something I haven't implemented, and you really shouldn't be manipulating the tool paths uh, on their own as it is. You should be using the other tools. You can see that if I pan around, you can see how it, it all sets up. Little note, if we go back to project and we say that our origin should be the work surface, you can see it actually redraws it. Uh, it doesn't need to recalculate it. It's smart enough to figure that one out. Uh, but... For now, I actually don't like that. We'll go ahead and switch back up to there. All right, so let's go ahead and do a preview. Basically, I'm going to select whatever I want to preview over here, and it'll automatically be loaded in the simulation. So I'm just going to select all of them. I'm going to go over here to my play button. It's going to bring up my simulation. Uh, let's go ahead and go view. Camera. Manipulate it a little bit so that it's easier to see. So now we can go ahead and look at our code. Uh, note you can actually import G code uh, of some other file that you've done. It doesn't support arcs yet. It's pretty much just G1 commands and G0 commands. Uh, it does do spindle on off. You can see uh, right now you've got start code and there's nothing in there. You can actually define, uh, anybody who knows like uh, riprap stuff, you can find what kind of code you want to be run right at the beginning, whether that's a home or a turn machine on, flood on, whatever you want. It actually does the same thing at the end. You can see there's a little blank end code here. You can customize that too. It's under uh, settings and software. Uh, we can get into that some other time. So let's go ahead and just play it, see what happens. Uh, you'll see a tool start to come into view. There it is. And for make things just a little easier to see, I'm gonna turn that off. Uh, you can speed it up, you can slow it down. Uh, but it'll just sit here and preview it. You can see. Now we're doing our outside contour. And there you go. It's all done. Now, if you close this window, you lose your preview. Uh, so we're not going to do that right this second. But you can now navigate around and you can see this part. So now we have a nice little CNC clamp. Um, what it's worth. If you want to export them, Oh, visibility. You can see I 
can change my visibility by clicking on or off uh, over here in the Explorer. I'm going to go back to uh, my simulation button, but this time with, uh, with what I want to export, I'm going to go to Export, and then I'm just going to save it. Let's do Claim. Save. Okay, it's export. Now you can bring it onto your CNC and uh, use it for some basic uh, cutting. So that's it for now. Uh, there's a lot more to talk about, object manipulation, Bezier curves, all that kind of stuff. And there's a lot more refinement to do uh, on the code. So anybody wants to jump in, please do. It's open source. It's on SourceForge.